So today I'm reviewing the iPhone 13 Pro and touching on the 13 Pro Max. I'm mostly gonna focus on the iPhone 13 Pro because that's the 13 device that excites me the most, but I will be reviewing the iPhone 13 and mini in an upcoming video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see that one. Now this year they didn't change the design, nor should they. Apple just revamped it the previous year. They're not gonna make any big design changes, but there are a couple of design features that are new. One is not so much a feature, but it is heavier. Like if you pick up the 13 Pro Max and you have the 12 Pro Max in your hand, you can feel the added weight on the 13 Pro Max. This attributes to a slightly thicker body and a bigger battery. So there's a little bit more weight in the hand. Now, personally, I like the weight of the 13 Pro. It's definitely heavier than the 13 because of the stainless steel body, but it feels like a solid device. I will say this, if you're not a person who puts cases on their devices, I suggest the very least you put a screen protector on top. Apple says it has some of the strongest glass in the business. I believe them, but the stronger the glass gets, the softer the surface is. And because of that, it will scratch super easy. I remember last year with the 12 Pro Max, I put it in my pocket. This was like literally three days later and I had scratches on the screen already. So at the very least, put on a screen protector. The notch. 20% smaller. And right off the bat, you'd think you'd gain more screen real estate. Technically you do, but it's on the sides. The sides on the top beside the notch. And because of that, you're just not getting any more vertical space when you read. If it was thinner the notch, then yeah, you would technically be gaining more screen real estate when you're reading articles. But because it's on the sides, you're really not gaining anything. Does the smaller notch make the phone a lot more attractive to look at? Maybe if you're paying attention to it, but I don't find that it's getting less in my way. It feels just the same as before. I think finally when Apple gets rid of the notch completely, that's when you'll truly see the difference or perhaps even a hole punch will matter too. The display is hands down my favorite upgrade. I know a lot of people feel the camera is, but I'm someone who has been using high refresh rate displays on Android devices for the past 950 years. It's about time Apple brought it to the Pro lineup. Like it was missing for a while. Like even budget to mid-range smartphones have it now, but I'm glad they did because I think it's the best way to perceive speed. Like if I was to bring an average consumer into my studio right now, have them play with the iPhone 13, put it down and then pick up the 13 Pro, they would perceive that the 13 Pro is significantly faster, even though those two devices share the exact same processor. That's how much difference it makes. And this is apparent when you're scrolling menus, when you're playing games, it just feels like your phone is free. Now, the cool thing is just like, uh, other phones, it's using an adaptive refresh rate. So that means it can go anywhere from 10 Hertz all the way up to 120 Hertz. Like right now with the screen being static, it's probably at 10 Hertz. But as soon as I open up a browser and I start, you know, scrolling up and down, the 120 Hertz mode is kicking in. And then as soon as the scroll slows down, it's probably lowering the refresh rate to conserve battery life. You're watching a movie at 24 frames per second. The refresh rate is going to stay at 24 Hertz. The other thing is the brightness. I don't know what it is. I was watching a movie. The HDR is a lot more apparent now than it was last year. These 1000 nit displays on the Pro, which have a peak brightness of 1200, it makes a difference. Now, one thing that not a lot of people are talking about are the speakers. It's still has stereo speakers. They're still in the exact same position. The only difference is that the speaker is closer to the top of the body, but the new iPhone 13 Pro actually has louder speakers. I was listening to them and I'm like, what? The 13 Pro has louder speakers. They improved it and didn't say anything about it. It's not massive. It's not drastic. They just get louder. They sound a little bit more vibrant. It's about two decibels louder, but hey, you know what? I'll take better external speakers any day. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on performance because I feel like the A-series chips in general are way ahead of its time and the software that these phones utilize are just not pushing it to its full potential. You buy a phone with an A12 or A13, it's gonna feel fast. You buy last year's iPhone 12 with an A14, it feels fast. And the same holds true for the A15. Whatever games you play on this, whatever sort of photo editing or video you do on this, it's not going to lag. The overall experience has been absolutely smooth. I haven't experienced any micro lag at all. The phone just runs flawlessly. 
As for the battery, the size has gotten bigger on all the 13 devices compared to the 12. In fact, I actually stopped using the 12 Pro last year because the battery life wasn't good. I switched to the 12 Pro Max, which the battery life was great, but then I found the 12 Pro Max to be a little bit too big for day to day, so I swapped down to the 12 and the battery life was good on that too. I never reviewed the 12 mini last year, but I know a lot of people complained about the battery life. That doesn't seem to be the case this year. The battery life on 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max is absolutely insane. Because I've been using the 13 Pro the most, I'm getting anywhere from six to seven hours of screen on time. I'm able to finish the day with like 50% before I even need to charge. Like if you're a heavy user, you don't have to have battery anxiety. This phone is gonna get you through the entire day. Now, fast charging is still the same. It's around 20 watts. You can obviously use wireless charging up to 10 watts. So overall, not the fastest charging in a smartphone, but the one thing I love about iPhones is the health of the battery lasts a lot longer than other devices I've used in the past. Now, the cameras are probably the most important aspect of these devices to a lot of you. To me, it's probably the second most important after the high refresh rate, but the array or the setup is very similar. They're thicker, the bump is bigger, and yes, you do need new cases to support these iPhones. You can't use your old 12 Pro Max case. It won't fit. But the big takeaway is that the wide lens now allows in more light. It shoots as at an aperture of f1.5 compared to f1.6 in last year's iPhone. In fact, the 13 now gets the Pro's wide camera from last year. So that too is also getting a slight upgrade in the low light department. Now, does this phone take significantly better pictures than the 12 or 12 Pro? It depends. Like if it's during the day, no, you're not gonna see a difference. Like it's so hard to, to really compare the quality of a picture during the day. Like all these phones take great shots and comparing it to last year's sensor where you don't need to take in more light, it's gonna look very similar. The only time you really truly notice the difference is when you're taking night shots. That's where these wider sensors play the biggest role. You're able to take in more light. And if you wanna get the best pictures at night, don't let the iPhone automatically guess how long you have to hold it steady for. Do the max the whole time, because once you do that, the pictures actually end up looking better than what the Galaxy S21 can do. By a large margin, no, but it does make a difference and you do get a better looking photo. The telephoto lens goes up to three times this year, which is kind of nice. It's more than 2.5 on the Pro Max from last year, so you can get a little bit closer. And that's fine with me because I didn't ever, ever use the crazy zoom lenses on the Galaxy devices or Huawei devices from the past. Three times is perfect. Maybe sometimes I want to go up to five or eight, but I honestly don't have a use case for 30 or 100. Apple also introduced a brand new feature called filters, and this allows you to give your pictures a different feel to it. Basically, you're changing the tone and the white balance, making it a little bit more warm or contrasty or cooler. If you swipe up on the camera, you get the option to hit the filters icon, and then you have different filters you can choose. The first one is standard. That's just your regular picture you usually take on your iPhone, which is a bit more neutral. And then if you swipe to the right, you get rich contrast. This makes it a bit more vibrant, it's contrasty, very similar to the Pixel phones. You swipe again, you get vibrant. This reminds me more of Samsung devices. It really makes the colors pop. And then you swipe again, photos look warm. This is great like if you're on a cool day and you wanna make the photo look a little bit warmer. Or if you're feeling the shot should be a little bit more dramatic, you can also change it to cool. Now you can set these filters to be permanent on every picture you take, or you can manually choose it every time you take a picture. Just note that if you do take a picture with one of the filters applied, you can't take it off later. It, it, after the shot has happened, the filters applied, there's nothing you can do. The other cool camera feature they brought was macro photography. We've seen this with crappy two megapixel depth sensors on other Android devices, and sometimes they work great, but most of the time they're pretty gimmicky. The way the iPhone does it is really good. Like I took a bunch of macro photos and they came out clear, they came out sharp, and they looked fantastic. The Galaxy S21 Ultra came pretty close, but overall I like the look of the iPhones. The only thing I don't like is the inability to switch back and forth manually. You have to bring the phone closer and closer to the subject. And once it gets close enough, the camera will automatically switch to macro mode. And you can kind of see this happening right in front of you. But the problem is it can mess up some pictures because there's instances when you don't want the camera to switch to it. Now, the good news is Apple did say they're gonna bring the ability to manually switch it yourself in a future update. But for now, 
Just have some fun with it until they do. And finally, cinematic mode. This is basically portrait mode for videos. We've seen this specifically on the Samsung phones before. And look, I've never been a big fan of it. You know, like if you need to block the background out because you're in a weird place and you don't want to get uh, too many interruptions in the video call you're having, it's kind of cool. But the way Apple is advertising it is more of a video production feature. Like you're shooting a little video with your iPhone and you need to rack focus between two subjects. The actual function of it works very well. It's very accurate when it comes to moving from one subject to the next. But the problem is it only shoots at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and the lighting needs to be perfect. If it's a little bit too dark, it just won't activate and you can't use the feature at all. I'm not gonna write this off as a complete gimmick right now, but I will say at the moment, it feels a bit gimmicky. This is a selfie test. You're now listening to the iPhone 13 Pro and we are comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. You guys let me know which one has the better color and of course the better microphones. There's also one other thing that not a lot of people are talking about. And I'm gonna get a bit nerdy for a second, okay? With the iPhone 11, they used a very crappy Intel modem and because of that, the reception was terrible iPhone 12 came along, Apple and Qualcomm resolved some differences and the X55 modem got placed in the iPhone 12. This allowed for 5G, this allowed for much better connections. Now the X55 was a great modem, but it wasn't the best modem because it was using a seven nanometer architecture. So it wasn't as efficient. It would, it would kill your battery life a lot quicker than the newer X60 that's available today. On top of that, it, it, it didn't aggregate 5G bands, meaning if you're on a network with 5G normal and you had access to millimeter wave, you couldn't combine them together. With the new X60 that's inside of the iPhone 13 Pro, not only can you aggregate 5G bands to get those faster 5G speeds, you also get better battery life because the chip itself is running on five nanometers. Now, all of these devices do support Wi-Fi 6, which is great, but I know it's super nerdy. I had to mention this. And the last thing is MagSafe. A lot of people are saying the magnets are a bit stronger, maybe a little bit, but it could just be a placebo effect on me. The magnets feel just as sturdy as they did before. Like this is the new Apple wallet, okay? And the beauty about this guy is that it has an NFC chip inside. so. If you lose this, or if it gets disconnected or removed from the back of your iPhone 13 Pro, find my iPhone will pick it up. Like you'll get a notification like you would if you were using an AirTag. So I'm gonna connect it right now so you can see for yourself. As soon as I connect it, it automatically pops up on my screen and then I have the ability to add it to the Find My app. So if I ever lose my wallet after a certain amount of time, my phone is gonna notify me and tell me the last known location of the wallet. I thought that was pretty cool. So that wraps up my review of the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. Look, if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or even a 12, this is not a worthy upgrade. Like no phone from the year before. It doesn't matter if it's a Samsung, an LG, actually LG doesn't exist anymore, or OnePlus, the previous year device is never a major upgrade. These phones have gotten so good now that justifying upgrading year over year is not only bad for the environment, you're just not gonna see any crazy perceived benefits. I think, anything from the iPhone XS and lower would be a worthy upgrade because after the XS, that's when the camera on the iPhones got really good. And, and this year, they're even better. I still think these are the best cameras you can use for consistency. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section and down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.